Well, you know, every reporter, every journalist always has a working theory. Um, I... And, and which is subject to change. The more you learn, the more you know. But I think a very important dot that Hammer connects. And by the way, if I may say, share for your view, for your listeners, this book is only available one place. The website for the publisher www.authorhouse.com. That's the only place you can can read this book. My working theory, based upon my own research and watching what Hammer and Jesse Trinidou have developed, and I think this is the dot that Hammer connects, a very important one, Alex, is the use of criminal criminals as informants reporting directly to federal law enforcement. Um, I think that's going to be a major element of this story once the whole story is told. As Hammer points out, most, virtually all of the members of this Aryan Republican Army bank robbery gang that Timothy McVeigh fingered as his on-the-ground support squad in Oklahoma City on April 19, virtually every one of them at one time or another, before, during, or after the Oklahoma City bombing, was functioning as a, a criminal informant to federal law enforcement. Well, we know the feds do this everywhere. They'll have a convicted uh, arsonist, uh, child molester, bank robber, and then they'll be used in court against people who don't even have a criminal record. So here's the government saying, don't listen to David Hammer. He's a convict on death row. But then listen to all of our criminal informants that we're using, and then when they're clean criminal informant, uh, Hal was inside Elohim City and came out and said they're getting ready to blow up the federal building. They indicted her just to shut her up because one agency didn't know what the other agency was doing. Uh, but finishing up with that, we need to talk about Mr. Hammer, what we know about uh, him now being uh, uh, basically punished uh, and his letter that made it out. Have we heard anything else from him? Actually, yes. I'm happy to say, Alex, that this morning um, I have had another email from Hammer. He remains um, extremely concerned about what is to come. Obviously, this um, disciplinary you know, procedure will go forward. How heavy it's going to be is is unknown so far. As you know in the email he sent yesterday, which you posted on your website, um, you know, he he was, you know, fearing that it was going to be heavy consequences and was expecting that all of his communications would be shut down. So far, um, that has not happened. Um, his plea was, you know, uh, if, if this makes sense to people out there, if he is representing this story and the continuing research effort, you know, he was encouraging people to be in touch with um, the prison. If I may say, if I may add, Alex, one of the amazing, um, well, not so amazing to me as I come out of the America's Most Wanted Enterprise, which I, I worked for, for for some years, the the information that is starting to surface through, you know, your listeners, we've had, you know, very interesting emails, factual informational emails, um, just continuing to add, you know, clues and leads to this. This is what could be the tipping point of this entire investigation, is that if, as David Hammer has shaken the tree here to bring information in, and as you have, you know, uh, had the uh, the, the courage to, you know, get on the air and really give this a hearing, um, let's, let's solve this. You know, that's basically what Hammer says in his book, let's solve this. And there are more very important moments just, just down the horizon, and one of them is Jesse Trinidou's fight over these surveillance tapes, and why is the FBI, again, fighting tooth and nail to keep these pictures secret? Um, you asked me what is my theory. I think the videotape that the FBI is still holding is going to show us pictures of people who were with Timothy McVeigh on the, on the morning of 4 And I think those pictures will be revelatory as to the potential um, you know, government involvement in some way or other here. But for 15 years, they've been declaring national security on all those different videotapes. But we do have the witnesses 
that day and the days before who did see McVeigh all over the building, uh, sure. you know, in the ATF offices, you name it. I mean, these are credible people who, who are on record that work there and who saw him. Yes, I think you. That, all of this goes exactly back to that. And to, to your listeners who are, are kind of shouting, don't listen to David Hammer, I would just say remember that, you know, more than a dozen honest witnesses in Oklahoma and Kansas swore they saw John Doe number 2 with Timothy McVeigh. And who was that man? Just incredible. Uh, you know, I want to get you back for a full hour in the near future to really go over Oklahoma City from your perspective because we can't just do it just I'd be so glad to do that. And I was so, uh, it was a tremendous interview you did, Alex. You, you brought, you know, this was the fight to keep this silent. And you brought this story out and people did hear David Hammer in his own words. And I, I, I thought he was persuasive. Uh, no, so did my family and friends that heard it. But again, if you've really researched the info, you know how persuasive, because he was saying a lot of these things before it ever even came out. And a lot of this has now been confirmed uh, through the lawsuits of Jesse Trinidu uh, in the federal uh, court. Uh, Margaret Roberts, is there a website or uh, some a personal site folks can visit of yours? Or yes, is the... definitely. Please visit www.deadly-secrets.com deadly-secrets.com, and there is a box for information. More than anything, um, David Hammer would, would say, were he able to be here to say it himself, is somebody out there knows who was behind the Oklahoma City bombing. If, if anybody that's listening has any fragment of information firsthand about that, uh, particularly those of you in Oklahoma City, please go to the website Please be in touch. We are not going to stop. We are going to solve this case. Well, God bless you, ma'am. I look forward to talking to you again. We appreciate your years of tireless effort. You've gotten so much information out from Terry Nichols and others, uh, Margaret Roberts. We'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you, Alex. Keep you up bet. the good work. You too. We're going to come back, take your phone.